Hey guys, well today I got a new Beth Avenue story for you. You're going to like this one. Now, going back when I was a kid, I'm going to be talking about Giorgio Adamo, John Padone, John Polio, Albert Slavin, and the kids I grew up with. Also, a couple of associates that became wise guys. Now, in my neighborhood, the older guys that I hung around was a guy by the name of Georgie Conti, uh, Charlie Tuna, Scotty Fapiano, Mikey, Frankie Mericanda, Mikey Scars, Alfredo Temperino. These are the guys from my neighborhood coming up. Then you had Satch, you had Robert Blasco, you had Frankie Notch, you had a whole bunch of other guys. Uh, Frankie Bola, but this story today is about a guy by the name of Georgie Conti. Now, I'm not going to talk bad about anybody anymore from the neighborhood. I said what I said. I'm a man. There's a lot of things that happen in the neighborhood I really don't care for. Now that I'm older and grown up, I know right from wrong. But these guys were definitely no one to be wrecking with. They made their bones. They were young. Them two were around wise guys. They grew up like us the same way, uh, doing drugs with wise guys, wise guys turning us on to cocaine, uh, getting drugs from wise guys to sell drugs. So Georgie Conti was a guy that was around eventually first the Genovese crew. And then from the Genovese crew, he went to the Lucchese crew. Now, he made a name for himself. As I was a kid growing up, I looked up to Georgie Conti. Georgie Conti, when he was a kid, he looked up to guys like Jerry Papa and other old-time wise guys in the neighborhood. And that's how eventually Georgie Conti became a wise guy in the Lucchese crime family and then eventually a captain. You know, growing up in my neighborhood, it's like a recruitment center for young kids. You make your bones, and if you grow old enough and you are respectable, one of the crime families will take you underneath their wing and groom you, and you become a wise guy. This is what every kid in my neighborhood want. They want to become a wise guy. Not every kid gets it. Today, more than others. Years ago, it was very hard to get straightened out. You had to be around somebody and they had to see something in you and they taught you well and you kept your mouth shut. You didn't volunteer for things. Some guys did volunteer for things, but a wise guy is basically someone that is clever, smart, intelligent, sharp, from the street, did time, making money and has other criminal people as your friends. So Georgie Conti at this time uh, is making money. He has the pot spots. He has a little cocaine business on the beepers. And he calls me, Georgie Adamo, Tommy Reynolds, John Polio, Albert Slavin to come demolish his house. He's redecorating his house. So he says, listen, you're gonna come in. He gives us a bunch of ax handles, baseball bats and crowbars. We walk in there and he says, just hit everything, hit all the walls, break everything down. When everything's break down, he puts a big dumpster in front of his house with a, a cement thing that you could carry. They put all the garbage in it and we wheel it right into the dumpster. We dump it and Georgie Conti put us to work demolishing his house. He paid us a whole bunch of money. He bought lunch for all of us. And later on, a year or two later, he became a wise guy. He became a captain eventually in the Lucchese crime family. But this is what happens in my neighborhood. When you're making your bones and you're around people, you get on record with a crime family, 
they make you, you become a member in the family, and then eventually, if you're really, really, really special, you become a captain and other wise guys answer to you. Not everybody becomes a captain. In today's world, maybe, I'm not sure, but not everybody back in my day. Back in my day, if you made it to captain, you got pretty far in life. Becoming a wise guy was tough. So these are the guys I looked up to. And I'm gonna be telling a lot of stories about these guys in the neighborhood. One in particular guy was a guy by the name of Alfredo Temperino. Alfredo Temperino was a knock around guy in my neighborhood. And when I talk about Alfredo Temperino, I have to respect him because he's one of the guys in the neighborhood that I admired. Every time you seen him, you seen that he always wore these creased pants. They were Jordan's jeans, a nice brand new pair of sneakers, a nice shirt. He always had his hair nice. And you know, he didn't have to act tough. He got respect from the guys in the neighborhood and the old timers respected him too. And Alfredo Temperino, he was a type of guy that was, uh, he used to love to steal, used to love to rob. Uh, he had two other brothers, Sal Temperino and Joey Temperino. Uh, Sal Temperino was another thief. He was good at what he did. Joey Temperino was younger than him. And Joey Temperino and I used to be in the same class. And he had a couple years older than me. But Joey Temperino would always sit in back of my class and he always got left back. And his brother was Alfredo Temperino. So Joey Temperino comes to me, Albert Slavin and Georgie Adamo. And he says, you wanna make some money? And we go, of course, what do we have to do? So there's this woman that lives on 23rd Avenue and Cropsy. She gets off a bus over there around seven o'clock at night coming from Manhattan. And he tells us what you have to do is this woman gets off of the bus. This is what Joey Temperino is telling us. And he wants us that as soon as she gets off the bus, we have to run up to her and hit her and beat her up and scare her because she's a witness to a crime. She saw somebody commit a crime and she reported it. So now Joey wants me and Albert and Georgie to beat up this woman. So we say, okay, he think he wants to give us maybe $200 a piece. We say, okay, let's do it. So we get in the car with Joey Temperino, me, Georgie, Albert Slavin, and we drive to Cropsey Avenue. It's on the school block of uh, Cavallero. So it's 24th Avenue or 23rd Avenue over there. And we're sitting in Joey's car and we're waiting for this woman to get off the bus. Now she is, uh, she's seen a crime, she reported it. Now, what we want to do is we want to scare her. Maybe we want to push her, uh, punch her, whatever it may be. And we're going to do it because uh, we're going to make some money with it. So we see the lady. All of a sudden, Joey says, that's the lady. And me, Albert, and Georgie, we're a little scared because now we got to walk up to her. We got to punch her. So what we do is we say, you know what? I don't think it's right. Uh I don't know, you know what I mean? I don't feel right about this. And we never do it, okay? Joey Temperino forever keeps on telling us, you guys, what the fuck? You could have just hit that lady, I mean? So we cop out and we say, listen, you know what? We don't want to do it, Joey. You know what? Maybe something else we can do. So we never did it and we didn't hear the ending of it. But these are the crimes we committed in my neighborhood back in the day. Alfredo Temperino, he was involved in killing Nikki Izzo with Georgie Conti. When that hit happened, we were all on Bad Day Avenue when we seen it. And uh, Nikki Izzo was a tyrant at times. If he drank, 
Uh, he would abuse people. And I guess his time was up. You know, in the neighborhood, your time eventually gets up. If you don't uh, conduct yourself the right way, someone's going to knock you off your fucking block for sure. And that's what happened to Nicky Izzo. But eventually, Alfredo Temperino, he ends up killing himself by accident. And that's another story. But uh, these guys in my neighborhood growing up, they made a name for themselves. And Alfredo would have definitely became a great wise guy for sure. So I hope you enjoyed these little stories I share with you today. It's Saturday. Everybody have a great weekend. Give your life to God. Help somebody else if you can. And look up, look out for my next story. I love you guys and I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys.